9-11s, you know, there are angles where they just look insanely good. But so much beauty, has it ever been free of side effects? You've seen me repairing Walter at the very same spot. It's the notorious oil pipe dirt trap that is killing them. Miss Prussian Blue, however, she survived it just a tininess better than the red guy. You know, welding panels in, all is good as long as your eyes remain fixed to the outer sides. But, but, as we've seen, the Prussian beauty had some first tiny holes showing up. But I decided that all the notch effects and structural changes caused by welding are just about as harmful as the little holes caused by rust. So what can be done? Yes, I admit it. I'm Greasy Fingers from Germany and I use Rust Converter. But of course I didn't use any old Rust Converter. My friends from Wagner had an idea. They embedded the phosphoric acid that converts rust into a stable chemical compound in a gel making sure that the active substances won't run off before they are able to penetrate deeply into the rusted surface. I had an extensive interview with the developer and he told me that covering the whole thing with some plastic wrap will help creating the test tube environment that lets a nice iron lady find a willing phosphor boy. And while the magic of a chemical reaction was taking place, I repaired the next rust spot using the usual butt welding process that you know from my channel. I made a special effort to get gaps even tighter as usual to make sure that the area behind won't be harmed by weld splashes.
You know, my patience is not exactly on a Dalai Lama level. And before I would start to lift the plastic foil to find out how far the process has come, I called it a day and went for a weekend in the mountains. Four days later, here's what I found. It looked very good. Leveling down the surface with the sanding sponge didn't show any remainings of iron oxides. I felt the need to confirm the first impression and at a couple of spots I sanded the converted material down to the point the naked silver steel appeared. Still no rust to be found. Now what does that mean? It means that certain rust issues that haven't eaten up most of the metal and do not compromise the strength can reliably be repaired without welding new panels in. Whether you go one way or the other needs to be decided specifically for every case. One thing you don't have to decide. The outcome of both methods needs to be covered with two-component epoxy primer. It keeps oxygen away, and that can't be bad. And yes, this is some of it. It's one of those rattle cans that contain both the primer and the hardener. You break a membrane and they mix up. I bought it to paint a fan and didn't want my customer to find pink primer bleeding through when the blades get their chips and so I used up the rest on the fender project. Next on the list, this side panel with its bottom partly rusted away. You know, I tend to repair panels where possible instead of replacing them and we shall see later that in a way this would have been the right idea. I tried man, I tried. But it didn't work. Heaven knows I'm not doing this for the first time, but I just couldn't weld this panel. Whatever I did, whatever I tried, blowing a hole in was all I could achieve. I even made a repair panel for the repair panel, but let me spare you the ugly details. At some point I decided I'm going to buy another one and cut the old one out completely.
waiting for another spare panel to arrive. I primed the wheelhouse using some non-pink leftovers of epoxy primer and then returned to the wings. But I'm always trying to please you with colors and so I picked the blanket matching Luigi's anti-rust paint. This part of the wing had rust damages very similar to the ones I have already shown in my films about Walter. And as I'm trying to tie you to the screen for almost half an hour this time, I've decided to skip it. My predecessor forewent to paint the entire wing, because he probably thought that down here everything will be hidden by the silk covers anyway. I don't think so. I created a transition area at about the edge of the preceding paint job, added new stone guard and applied the Prussian blue. A little bit of an overspray isn't the problem here, as I'm using water-based paint that can be removed from underlying clear coats easily. I've mentioned it before, I prefer to use paint which is solvent-based, but for this tone I just couldn't get hold of it, and so I had to live with it being water-based. The left fender, the main actor of the last episode, I had given to my trusted painter. You have to know your limits, you see. The work I received back is outstanding and it's almost unbelievable that this is the piece of chunk it used to be some weeks ago when I welded it. I turned to the right side again to apply the final coat of clear. Precautions to avoid overspray need to be much more thoughtful when using two component clear. It connects to the underground very firmly and can't just be scratched off with the fingernail. In this case, clear was applied to hidden places only, with the will to preserve the not original but at least well matching external paint. The soft edge between old and new clear coat needs to be sanded down in a way that all greater unevenness is leveled out and then gloss is reinstalled with the polishing wheel.
So the wings were coming together okay, and I had to attend to this little situation. No matter how you look at it, there's just no way on earth to weld the side panel in with a spot welding gun. The pliers like one, you know, that connects to both sides. I could have plug welded it, like I did many times before in my films, but you see, all the riches on earth, you can't take them with you. And so I got me this cute Italian one-sided spot welder. Isn't that cool? I made myself familiar with the new kit and did some test welding with the crap panel from before. It's rather obvious that the electrode will heat up the spot with the lowest resistance and that means that there mustn't be any paint between the panels and the mask connection must be extra solid. I cleaned the according spots on the side panel and at the car I had avoided painting them in the first place. I used the original panel to position the new one and made two first plug welds with the normal MIG welding machine. There's basically nothing wrong with that. It's just that the amount of heat introduced to the body is a lot higher. And in environments like this, one has a hard time to press the panels together strongly enough while welding them. With the spot welding machine, it's easy to apply some force and a number of beats with the puncher will pre-shape the panels in a way that they connect to each other nicely. What a nice little machine! Olivia will love it and Luigi the GT project will love it too. Yes, 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 I know. I'm just as keen as some of you on finally finding time to start it. Everything received a thick cover of epoxy primer. I made sure it closes all gaps and of course I painted the backside too.
Do you remember when earlier in this film I stated that I prefer repairing panels over replacing them whenever possible? Yeah, that is why. You see, to attach these wings is actually less difficult than one might think. Actually, it's fair to say that they pretty much fall in place. Large body repairs, however, if they are carried out without an according gauge, have the potential to ruin the fit and the gaps. A solid steel pillar of the workshop and a simple vise from the warehouse helped me to get this right. Next, I sealed all gaps between wing and body and also the speed nuts with all their cracks and crevices were covered generously with body sealant. In the wheelhouses we obviously want stone guard and the closest thing I know to Porsche's own insanely stable and resilient stone guard is polyurethane based two component bed liner. In this case from my favorite brand Mipa. I've also added some blue acrylic paint to it to have it nicely dyed through. In order to create an even more authentic look of the wheelhouses, I threw some of the Prussian blue onto the wet bed liner. Or should I say into? Yes, into is more like it. I applied some of it to a piece of wrapping paper and gave it a night to cure. I guess that's a good way to show how powerful this solution is. It's hard, durable and at the same time flexible and the metallic paint sticks to it in a most inseparable way. Assembling the car with freshly plated screws and many new parts is just pure naked fun. Don't tell my customers, but if they didn't pay me, I'd pay them for allowing me to do it. Would you enjoy to listen to some more jazz while you watch it coming together? Okay. <laughs> 